we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. We can't tell our people they can vote yes on abolishing slavery unless at the same time we can tell them that you're seeking a negotiated peace. It's either the amendment or this Confederate peace. You cannot have both. How many hundreds of thousands have died during your administration? Congress must never declare equal those whom God created unequal. Leave the Constitution alone. Out of all the characters that you've played over the years, why does Mary Todd personally resonate with you? You know, so many of my characters, the characters I've had the opportunity to play that were, you know, important and well-written characters uh, resonate with me. I, I mean, Mary, Mary is, uh, Mary still lives with me, so it's almost like I find it hard to even see what, how much she resonates in, with me because it's just all so kind of fresh. Um, Mary was such an important, underexamined, and misunderstood character in American history, such a complicated and, and important woman in American history. Had there not been a Mary Todd, there would not have been an Abraham Lincoln. They were two sides of this coin that came together that made Abraham Lincoln. And uh, it, how very vital she was to him in studying that um, is fascinating. And she remained that. She was always his closest confidant, and she was art always the one that was toughest on him. Um, and he depended on that. And when push came to shove, I think you see it in the film, he would listen to her advice and she would give it. She wouldn't have any problem giving it. And um, she faced a lot of tragedy. She was highly emotional, didn't, didn't handle a lot of things well, and she felt things for him that he couldn't feel mm -hmm. because he had to do what he had to do and she was the emotional one and she was so emotional and in everybody's face and they hated her for it. They still hate her. You know, they still want to malign her without looking at the facts and looking at what she was. I mean, she made it easy for people to hate them. That is true. Yeah. She did some things that, you know, made it easy. She, she, but she certainly didn't, you know, go quiet into that good night. She, she felt some things had to, had to be done. The White House had to be fixed because it was a symbol of the importance that was democracy, that was the United States. And she fixed it. And they hated her. The first, she is the first first lady. That is where that coin, that, that phrase was, was coined. And um, it wasn't given to her out of affection, put it that way. <laughs> when you first saw Daniel, in the makeup and the wardrobe, what was that experience like for you? You know, I, it was kind of uncanny uh, and continued to be throughout. I, I never had any problem just believing that I was talking to Abraham Lincoln, which is a bizarre thing because, you know, I, I grew up in the United States with Lincoln on my pennies and on my fives, and, you know, he's this icon in our psyches to have a human being just so seamlessly become him is really uh, an incredible feat. Did you call him Mr. President? I mean, what was that? We we always did. We always and he always called me, me me Molly. I or mostly Molly. That was what the president called Mary. Um, but we had we you know had been forming our our relationship for months and months and months always in character that's certainly how i've always worked anyway i would have done that even had he not been like that thank god it was like i arrived at home finally to to be able to work with somebody like that um and when we when i saw him as lincoln totally i was mary so it was always mr lincoln i mary called him mr lincoln um, addressed him Mr. Al in letters or dearest and he called her Molly or mother and that's the way we always were and and uh, you know on the set always um, he, he calls her Mary once when he's angry at her. We are stepped out upon the world stage now with the fate of human dignity in our hands. Blood's been spilled to afford us this moment now, now, now. Abraham Lincoln has asked us to work with him to accomplish the death of slavery. 
No one's ever been loved so much by the people. Don't waste that power. This fight is for the United States of America. Do we choose to be born, or we fit it to the times we're born into? Well, I don't know about myself. You may be. What, what fascinates you personally about that time in history? Well, you know, <laughs> it's pretty fascinating the notion that back then it was actually a controversial issue whether or not slavery should be allowed. You know, nowadays it seems pretty obvious no human being should be a slave. Um, back then, a lot of people were, were fighting for it, largely because there was a lot of money on it. And that tends to be what's, I think, behind everything. But, you know, I think this is actually one of those rare instances where there was more than money involved. And, and some people really believed that white people were better than black people. And, you know, that sounds like a silly notion to me, at least now. Um, but back then, man, uh, people very indignantly demanded their, their right to have that opinion. And... Uh, some people hold opinions nowadays to me that seem equally silly, but they very they take themselves very seriously. The the rhetoric in Congress today has has it really changed no. since back then? No, I don't. I think that's. I think you look at at this this piece in history, beautifully created, magnificently created by Steven Spielberg, um, and it and it does remind you first of all of how fabulous and, and exquisite the potential of what this country always has been and is, and you're so proud of it to, to be here. And, and, and you want to fight for it again, to be the potential of, of, its, of, its, of, of what it's meant to be. And you, and you realize that, in, again, you know, that it was always that these two sides, these entrenchments you know, of these idealistic visions for this side and this side, you know, battle with each other and, and much of the time won't compromise so nothing can get done. And this one moment in time, this magnificent man knew something had to be done. Otherwise, somewhere down the line, the United States and its dream, the dream of it would be lost. And it's what he does and what he faces at home with his wife and his children, what he faces with the country and how he gets it done. Well, you know, this movie, I think, shows that even back then, even on an issue that was to us just seems really obvious, there was a lot of argument about it. And what I love is, is that Lincoln is getting grief from both sides. And this movie shows, yes, he was getting grief from the Democrats, because at that time the Democratic Party was the conservative party. Uh, he was getting grief from the Democrats who wanted to maintain slavery. He was also getting grief from the more radical Republicans, because at that time the Republicans were the progressive party. And they wanted to do more than what Lincoln was pushing for. You know, they wanted... <clears throat> black people to be able to vote. They wanted black people and white people to be able to get married. Things that, again, today seem pretty obvious. Back then, too revolutionary. And even if Lincoln personally believed in those things, he couldn't push for those things. He had to make compromises. Um, I really love that this movie shows that he had to make compromises. And he had to, uh, you know, uh, sometimes be a hypocrite and he sometimes had to make mistakes and he sometimes had to do some shady questionable things in order to forward his ultimate agenda to end slavery um, because we all think of Lincoln as this this icon this deity he wasn't he's a he's a human being I kind of feel like you could teach a social studies class now who me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I you know I, I've been thinking a lot about my, my favorite teacher in high school was a US history teacher mr. Bechtel because um, he always made it like a story. He didn't make it like school, memorizing dates and all that crap. He really um, told us stories. This settles the fate for all coming time. Not only of the millions now in bondage, but of unborn millions to come. Shall we stop this bleeding?